He has a 1-1 count. That one struck high. Left side. That one's going. That's out of here. Off the ropes. You have got to be kidding me. Class 4A fans, welcome in week five rankings. Kate Nissen joined, as always, alongside Andrew Brown. Hey, rankings are here. Be sure to also check out High and Tight. Andrew and I really go in depth, giving more opinions. I think we're going to do some midseason awards, some really fun stuff this week. We're going to switch it up a little bit and, uh, you know, do some more trivia. Uh, it, it's a must watch. It's, it's a really, a really a ton of fun and kind of allows Andrew and I to give our opinions more. But you guys are here for rankings. We're here to give them to you. Uh, we got a new team here in Class 4A as I reveal 15 through 11 this week, uh, week five rankings. It's North Scott, Andrew. Uh, what have you liked so far from the Lancers to, to uh, you think the ranker uh, plopped them in here at number 15? You know, I first off, Coach Ward, Coach Rolfs, you are ha- going to have a good time talking with either one of them. I mean, they're really fun. And uh, again, this is a team that doesn't get in a ton of, you know, uh, you know crooked number type games. You know, they, they don't get in too many of those. They keep themselves in it for the most part. Five and three in dominant games. I mean, they have had five dominant games. And, I you know, there's not a whole lot that you look at and go, okay, glaring holes. I mean, early on, you look at it, they've only had one instance of back-to-back losses. And then that's that's important, right? They and again, those back-to-back losses came in May, and so those at Pleasant Valley, it's always going to be tough there. But aside from that, they have not had back-to-back losses. They beat teams like Hempstead, Central Dewitt, uh, Maquoka as well, Davenport North, and so they've had they've had a lot of good things happen, and they've kind of had to rebuild a little bit here, you know. And and they've kind of had you know they've had some of their big leaders, you know, their all-time doubles leader, hits leader. He ha- he departed from last year, and so it's a lot that you have to worry about. Kai Smith is a guy that they said, look out for. He's going to be big this year, and he is, right? For them, he leads them in hits. He leads them in total bases. He leads them in RBIs. This is the real deal, guys. I mean, I, I like Kai Smith. I like all a lot of them. You know, you go, you go down the line here, a lot of juniors – and a couple seniors. So this is a team that next year is going to be even better. And this year, not bad. So I like them in the top 15. I think they sit there really well and they've done a whole lot to get there. Again, not many teams can say they they haven't lost back to back games. And uh, this is, this is one of those teams that ever since the beginning of the year has not done so. So I I like them where they're at. Yeah. Yeah. Well-deserved as North Scott makes their debut in our class four a rankings this year. Other than that, in this little group, 15 through 11, a few teams drop in Sioux City East and Davenport North drop. Prairie and Enola stay the same, not too much movement. East drops out of the top 10, which opens up a spot inside the top 10. And that spot goes to Waukee Northwest, who took a win over them head to head at the at the Battle of the Bluff, Battle of Council Bluffs tournament. Uh, they also picked up a huge win over Ankeny Centennial. Uh, that that kind of helps slot them in here. A loss to Johnston as well, but uh, win over Ankeny Centennial and a win over Sioux City East gets Waukee Northwest inside the top ten. Always a scary team. Always a team with a uh, uh, good pitching, as as we always talk about with the Wolves. But Andrew Linmar, the biggest jump this week in Class Four A. They jump up five spots to number nine. Yeah, and they've had now had two streaks of winning five consecutive five games or more consecutively. So in this last streak that they're on right now, currently eight wins in a row, Pleasant Valley, Ankeny, they couldn't do anything. Cedar Rapids, Jefferson, they took them to, they took them to the woods shop. I, 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 that was a huge series for them, but yeah, they are, they're constantly putting up some really good numbers and a lot of crooked numbers at that. See, I love Jackson Mishler. If I said that incorrectly or incorrectly, I'm sorry. He's a guy batting near 400, 26 ribbies on the year, 44 total bases. Man, this guy is fun. He is on base and nearly 500, and he's slugging nearly 600. So you've got a guy there, and and that's without mentioning 
early in the season, prior to the season, this was a team that I was told, hey, there's some underclassmen that are really going to make some big waves. And they have yet to really kind of find that stride. Uh, they've got a lot of seniors, though, that are really putting up a lot of good numbers. So uh, what you think about that, you know, guys like that, guys like Kramer as well, you know, they've got guys that are they're doing really well now. This is also a team that's going to be built for the future. So I, I like where they're at. Certainly they deserve it. A perfect week for them, eight in a row. They are slotted where they should be and trending in the right direction. Liberty, Southeast Polk, and Waukee round out eight through six here. Waukee drops out, opens up a spot, and it's uh, we got a familiar top five now. We've had the same top five all year, except for uh, when Waukee kind of jumped in and, and took that spot last week. But we're back to the same group, City High, Johnston, DCG, Centennial, and Kennedy. Time to see how they shape up. At number five, it is City High. Winners of eight straight, uh, just like you talked about with Linmar. And let me tell you, eight straight and five of them have been shutouts. Uh, two of those against Xavier, one against Clinton, one against Waller, and one against Solon. This pitching staff is, is dominant. Uh, they, I mean, they lead Class 4A and ERA at 1.81, which is uh, microscopic in, in terms of that. Uh, Andrew, what do you like? I know you, I know you like the pitching, but what else do you like about Iowa City High? Well, again, I, I mentioned earlier, I love City Highs for Schrader and and young those two oh my gosh I, we were so blessed to see them back to back when it came to uh when we were last prior to that at uh at farley community park or, or with western dubuque and it was just fun it was really fun to watch them battle it out plus dominic salibi at third i think you can't get anything past him i never saw anything get past him in the time that we were there and that was something that was really cool to see. Uh, I love everything. You know, of course, we gotta can't go without mentioning Jake Mitchell, who, by the way, has the lowest ERA out of any Little Hawk. But then we don't mention that because you got guys like Schrader and Young absolutely dealing it up. And the thing is, with them, neither of those put up a ton of strikeouts in the grand scheme of it, right? I mean, you look at them, none of those guys are in the top 10 or even the top 15 as they keep scrolling down and down and down. Schrader looking at 28th. Why? But the thing is, they're ground ball pitchers. They get they get out. The defense behind them is so darn good. I looked at this ranking and went, you know, I get it, but I, I can easily see Iowa City High as a top three team. I really can. The way that they play defense I think they're the one of the best, if not the best, defensive team 4A has to offer right now. And that's without saying they they had guys like Obermuel last, Obermuller last year who's now for pitching for Iowa. I mean, he was stellar defensively. They had tons of guys that left, but they they step up with, with even better guys. So, again, I, I love what they're going doing. This is one of the best defensive teams out there, and it really bodes well. These pitchers don't have to go out and throw 10 strikeouts a game. They can put up two Ks and still not give up hardly any any hits or any runs. That's the big key with them. Uh, it just frustrates teams. So I, I like them where they're at, but I think they could go higher as well. I love it. Well, Andrew, the only reason they're not top three is because the two teams ahead of them, and that starts with Johnston. Uh, they had that rough stretch. They got swept by Centennial, lost to Waukee. Since then, winners of six straight. They've scored 10-plus in four of those. And I think if uh, if we remember to the preseason, our, our big question mark with this team was, what's the pitching going to look like? They lost a lot of their innings. Yep. What's that going to be? Well, we're at the about the midway point of the season. This team is second in ERA, uh, as team ERA, uh, behind City High. And uh, they're one of only two teams in the class to have an ERA below two as a staff. So Johnston... Uh, the pitching is is uh, a pleasant surprise, I'd say, for what we maybe expected. Yeah. The offense is starting to churn, uh, putting up runs. This team could be uh, clicking at the right time. Oh, yeah. They're, you know, we had a couple last week or so. They, they went, they had a rough start, rough stretch, and I think they took it out on everyone this year. Uh, you know, Valley, poor Valley didn't get much of a shake there. <laughs> they had a big win there. And of course, yeah, we mentioned Walking Northwest. That that's not, that team doesn't lose fifteen to one very often. 
but Johnston just made that happen there. And they're one of uh, they're tied for second in terms of most dominant wins or most wins of five runs or more. And uh, it's not it's not hard to see why. I mean, you got guys like Whedon up there, absolutely rocking his thing, and he's one of several p- puzzle pieces. This team's not going anywhere. You just like we have the last few years. Just get comfortable with Johnston being a top five team. No doubt. Uh, right ahead of them this week is DCG, and I tell you what. Ever since the Centennial loss, while you were talking, I was trying to tally up these wins. There's just so many of them in a row. I'm, I'm struggling to count these. I believe it's 11 wins in a row for DCG uh, at this point. Uh, th- this team is, I mean, they've been clicking all year. There, there's, there, I'm not going to say they haven't been. They won slip up to Ankeny Centennial. Besides that, this team has been absolutely money uh, running that running the conference. Uh, basically, I mean, Tate and Gray, first guy in the state to double-digit home runs. The pitching is is extremely uh, dominant, like we thought. Uh, I mean, DCG, it, it's so hard to split up these teams in the top five because each of them are so strong in what, what seems like every area. <laughs> yeah, and this is another team that is going to hurt you different ways. Keaton Fenn, who's leading 4A in strikeouts right now, is a guy that they can put up there. And, you know, then they could even get him if they use him right. And if he goes quick enough, they could use him on the back end of the week for another pitching performance as well. Uh, but they've got guys, they've got depth, they've got hitting. I mean, it's a broken record at this point. But, yeah, DCG, one of the top pitching teams. And, you know, they go up against a good gauntlet. I like where they're at. And, the, you know, they lose Campadilly from last year, yet somehow they're still making up in that extra production just that you – them and go oh woe is them you know everyone else oh woe is the thing they're a tough team and it's easy to see why no doubt i think you're cutting out a little andrew but i think people get the gist dcg rolling as always as we go to number two here it is ankeny centennial uh they they did lose to walkie northwest people are going to say why aren't they slipping for that loss but uh, I'd argue that it's because of a, a doubleheader sweep over uh, a walkie who was at, at top five at the time. Andrew, if you're uh, still with me, uh, what's the like about Ankeny Centennial? It seems like they're they're playing pretty good ball right now. Uh, yeah, they're just on, on a roll. Um, and uh, yeah, sorry, I got a little technical difficulties here, but I, I like Centennial. They're just consistent. Again, they're, it doesn't get out of hand very much. And so they put through what is a good uh, performance every week. So they're not gonna they're not gonna find many games in which they're losing big. Waukee was really the only one for that happen there a big loss there. But yeah, this was a good week for them, and they showed why. They're showing that they have more than Oki, more than Alberhaski. Al- they have guys that can step on up there, and uh, they've got versatility. So you're not gonna find anybody who's kind of a little dipping here and there. No, you, you got guys that are at the top of their game. So I would love to see this team go as far as possible because it's electric, and I'd love to see them in some of the most electric atmospheres. And, yeah, they're, they're a team that's that's built for the big run. No doubt. Well, Centennial at two means Kennedy at number one. Four games this week for Kennedy, two doubleheaders, and it was a tale of two different doubleheaders. Prairie, two shootouts. They slipped up in one of them, uh, took their second loss of the year. Obviously not enough for a ranker to, to knock them below number one. But in their second doubleheader, they go up against a Liberty team that I've personally liked, and that pitching staff, whew, uh, pitching staff at Liberty is, is really good. And this Kennedy team found a way to scrape some runs by and, and won both those games 5 nothing and one nothing respectively. I think this shows me – this shows uh, – me, Andrew, that Kennedy can win in multiple ways. They can they can win those low scoring pitching duels. We know they can win those high scoring affairs. You don't want to you don't want to play it. You don't want to be in a track meet with this team. Uh, I mean, lo- lots of liking Kennedy. That Liberty doubleheader sweep really sent a message to me. Yeah, and the fact of the matter is, again, Liberty. They've had two guys, two pitchers who have had at least one complete game so far this season. You mentioned that they're they're a fun, they're exciting pitching staff. So again, it's like a low scoring game for Kennedy could be eight five nothing. You know, it could be that uh, they have the most dominant wins by any team across the state, and it's hard to say that when you're in four A. 
but man, one through 10, you know, I've, I've talked with other coaches and they go, you know, I've, I've talked with a three, a coach and he goes, I'm just glad we're not in four a because if we had to face them, it would just, I, I'd be worried. I'd be up till 4am that night trying to figure out how we stop them. Cause there's just not a way you've just got to hope that they slip up themselves. I mean, they've had 10, 10 games of 10 runs or more. I mean, this is the highest run average, highest run differential. They're, they're just, they're, they're mopping teams left and right. And that was including, uh, you know, teams like Western Dubuque. They swept Iowa City high. And as you mentioned, Iowa City Liberty sweeping them. Uh, they, uh, they have now proven that they can go against any pitching staff and they can rock it any day of the week. No doubt. Well, a lot of fun stuff in Class 4. It's only going to be heating up as pairings come out next week, I do believe. Uh, Andrew and I, we had a ton of fun bringing the rankings to you. Be sure to go check out the other rankings. Uh, and everybody, we'll catch you next week. See you, Class 4A.